Now, the good news, you know, is there good news, is there bad news in terms of, you know, kind of will India make it? And, and by make it, I really mean that, you know, can India grow over the next 25, 30 years at about 7, 8 percent, you know, which is important, you know, one can have the debate about whether growth is everything or, you know, it needs other things. But it's a, it's a precondition. We need to grow at about 7, 8 percent to lift people, uh, more people out of poverty, provide jobs and so on. Uh, and I think the, the good news is that even though the state is becoming weak, and, and you know, Suketu referred to the devolution of power, and, and something that you referred to, you know, the good news is that the way India is going to go forward is, you know, I think through this healthy competition of, a uh, uh, healthy dynamic of the competition between states. Some states do well, other states are obliged to follow. Uh, and a number of these experiments will can kind of travel. And it's not just a demonstration effect, it's also the fact that, you know, if Gujarat does well, uh, you know, workers move from Bihar and Kerala and Orissa, uh, and so there's pressure on the, the Bihar government and the Odisha government to kind of perform. So that's, I think, a very healthy development. It's complemented by the fact that, you know, uh, just to step back, you know, the one question we're always asked is, you know, uh, we Indians look wistfully at China as, you know, here is a country that, you know, makes quick decisions while we have a lumbering, indecisive democracy. And so the question is, which is better? And my answer to that is to invoke, you know, the great postmodern philosopher Donald Rumsfeld, who said, you know, uh, you, you go to bat with the political system you have, not with the political system you, you wish you had. So, so, you know, India is stuck with democracy to say, you know, we need, it won't happen. But the good news is that I think democracy is delivering in the sense that more and more states that do better are being, you know, governments, uh, state governments that do better are being rewarded at the polls. So it creates this healthy dynamic of you get good governance, you get growth, and you're rewarded in the polls, so democracy itself delivers. So that's, I think, the good news. I think the bad news is that, you know, our, our public institutions are really being, I, I think, being destroyed, uh, being decimated. Uh, in, in ways that are really very disturbing. I think the one thing we should not forget, and this is my last caveat, is that, you know, democracy requires two kinds of accountability systems. One is what you get, what I call episodic accountability. You know, uh, at the elections, you throw the rascals out if they do a bad job, and, and you put back guys who do a good job. But I think the strength of a democracy is what happens on an ongoing basis. That ongoing accountability do we have? You know, is, is power delivered, uh, uninterrupted power? You know, the, the sanitation work, is water work, health systems work, education work? And that's a system of, you know, a mature democracy. And I think we are not there yet. And so our democracy has to mature in, in delivering this ongoing accountability. That I think, you know, if you actually go to every developing country and ask, What's the problem? I think corruption will be number one on almost every country's list. So this is kind of a universal phenomenon. Some developed countries also. Uh, and some, yeah. you know, uh, as they say, the only difference between the, the US and India maybe is that in, in, in the US, corruption takes the form of making the rules, and in India, it takes the form of breaking the rules. You know, so, <laughs> so, so there's not maybe uh, that much difference. Land has become the big so source of corruption in India. A and to some extent, I think you have to understand that this it's, is a reflection of India's growth because when you have a lot of growth, all these fixed assets become very valuable. And so there's kind of you know, a, 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 a race to get access to these very valuable resources. So I think it's a problem we're going to have to live with. Uh, it's a problem that democracy has to address uh, through checks and balances. B but one thing we can, I can confidently say is that this problem is not going to go away over the next 10, 15 years. So uh, it's, it, I think the big problem with that the data is that uh, it's called transparency international. So Indian corruption is more transparent. Uh, 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 there's, right, so, you know, the, I, when I, uh, I was in 2004, when I was in India, I watched the, on TV, there was a journalist who, um, who had a video camera, and he took the video camera to the hotel room, and he videotaped a defense minister, a former defense minister. People get distorted view of India because they always compare India with China, right? China is a superstar in terms of statistics, right? Whether it's real, yeah. it's a separate issue. It's, 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 a, it's a superstar. So compared with a superstar, you always are going to look a little bit pale. But in the 1990s, even before India began to grow at 8%, India was ranked number four 
in terms of growth rate among the 60, uh, 40 or, or 50 emerging economies in the world, even in the 1990s. So I, I really think that we ought to think about our perspective uh, first. I, I think okay. one um, as far as whether I'm optimistic or pessimistic about India, it depends on how much I've had to drink. <laughs> uh, so far only water, right? But, but I think the, the wonderful thing about India is that it really, d our optimism or pessimism doesn't matter. The country has something going for itself. The Balkans got balkanized, but India remained one country. And there's something still very powerful about the idea of India that continues to, to sustain it. I mean, it's, it's an atrocity how we treat our children, how we treat our women. Uh, and sometimes it makes me deeply, deeply pessimistic and angry, really. But um, it continues in all its, its glory, in, in, in all its misery, it continues. 